What's up guys, it's Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're going to do an overview of what I'm calling my survival bag. And just as far as the vocabulary goes, people talk about these kind of bags, survival bags, bailout bags, um, in different kind of scenarios that where they might use them. Uh, generally I view a bug out bag or a bailout bag, you know, something I'm going to grab, I'm going to get a hold of, head off to the woods to get away from a, you know, insane situation. You think something like post Katrina, you know, that type of situation where it's like, there's chaos, there's things going crazy in the streets, lack of transportation, lack of, um, you know, uh, public transportation, electricity, things like that. And you got to get away from a dangerous situation. Now, this bag, I'm not using this as a bug out bag or a bailout bag like that. This is my survival bag. I keep it in my car at all times. And my goal with this is two things, really. The first one is, if I'm in a situation where, say, I'm camping, hunting, fishing, hiking, doing something in the woods, my car breaks down, I'm 10, 15 miles from the nearest uh, main road or intersection or where I can get some help, and I need to survive, let's say either in the car, in the woods, whatever it might be, this will su supply me with the things I need to get by, and also, you know, to really, with that and a skill set, to be able to last for, for quite a long time. Uh, I also have this just for a kind of day-to-day -day need, so you'll see, like I'll show you, i got a hat in here, and every once in a while I'll be out at a place and I'm like, oh man, it's really cold in this deli where I'm waiting for somebody for a meeting. Boom, now I got a hat on me. Or, you know, oh man, it's really uh, cold. I've got an extra layer of clothing in here. So um, that's kind of how I use this. And I call it my survival bag because just general everyday use, different things pop up. And this bag has, um, has served very well. So if you want to see the review of the actual bag here, you can just check out this link and uh, head over to the review of this LA Police Gear Jumbo Bailout Bag. But right now, I'm going to go into the details of talking about what's in the actual bag. Alright, so we'll start in the front pocket here. Unzip this guy. And um, first thing you'll see here is my Black Diamond headlamp. And uh, this guy, if you're familiar with Black Diamond, they're uh, an outdoors company. Mostly they do stuff related to rock climbing. But I got this guy. Um, headlamp is great to have, therefore it frees up your hands. If you're trying to work on something, repair something, whatever it might be. So, first form of lights. Got this guy as well, and this is a, a stream light, a flashlight. It's um, not super strong. It's got, as you can see, the brightest setting, lower setting, and off. The reason I like it so much is it is uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Cost me about 20 bucks, and it also takes um, basic size AA battery, so you don't have to worry about you know having some special type of battery. But uh, this is good. It's got this little. Uh, I want to say bandolier, but that's not it. But you know, basically this uh, string, so you can uh, you can wrap it around your wrist, or you can tie it off to something if you need it to. So, second form of light. Also in here, got uh, in this bag a bunch of batteries. You got single A's, double A's, um, or double A's, triple A's, and C's. And those are the most common that I run into as far as needs. And I first actually started carrying batteries because I was at a um, in a camping situation, staying at a cabin with some buddies, and. Um, Somebody had run out of batteries for their flashlight. My buddy had a bunch of these in his bailout bag, and I thought, man, that's a great idea to have that. So I grabbed a bunch of these. I had them um, in my bag. And a reminder for all this stuff, uh, just some general principles when it comes to a survival bag is, you know, be checking frequently. Are the batteries still good? Have they been in the bag for a while? Make sure that you're swapping them out and putting new batteries in if that is the case, you know, as well as food, you know, water purification tablets, things like that. So batteries. Next up. A load-bearing carabiner. This is actually a rock climbing carabiner, not just the kind you're gonna, you know, get to put your uh, keys on, but this will actually carry some weight. If you ever got in a situation where you had to move something or haul something and needed a strong carabiner, so that is there. I got a uh, cluster of pens and bright marker. A bright marker there. I've got a uh, sharpie right here, miniature sharpie as well, and. Uh, one of the key things I like to have with me is one of these. This is like a carpentry pencil, and you can just see it's from Lowe's there. But it's good because if you're, you know it gets cold and your pens freeze up, you can still write uh, with a uh, with a pencil like that. You just need a blade to sharpen that up. So writing utensils, and then here I've got a little memo pad. This is great if you need to take notes based on a situation, or even if you uh, you know you want to leave a note on your dashboard and be like, hey, I'm traveling back down the main road, and then I'm going to take a left as I try to get back to you know the local town or whatever. Now you can leave a note, people know where they can find you. So that's good to have as well. That's pretty much it for that front pouch. Let me zip that up. Over here, got, um, these are LL Bean Mountaineering sunglasses. These are the ones that have the uh, the shades that kind of come down the sides on both sides. 
uh, good if you're ever doing something in the winter and you're facing a lot of snow you can actually deal with snow blindness so it's good to have some sort of solid eye protection and then you got this uh, case that they come in so some sort of eye protection there get stuck in the woods it's nasty out you want to have some sort of uh, bug repellent this is sportsman max so you can see 40 percent deet i generally don't use something that with that high uh, percentage of deet but you know in a crisis or a survival situation good to have something that's uh, high tech it also comes with this little carabiner that it came with but um it th that came attached to the um container but you can use this for other things if you had to hang something or whatever it might be so one of the keys to good survival is multiple uses so you know not just it's not just a carabiner to hang that it's a carabiner you can use for something else as well so um talk about medical stuff in a minute but just a um a first aid bandage um for you know sprains things like that uh comes with these two little attachments so you know you can basically wrap it around your wrist or your wrist your ankle whatever it might be and then secure it nice and easily you could use it probably not as something right against a cut if you could avoid it but if you had to you could still do that probably put a gauze over a cut and then wrap this guy you could actually use that as well so multiple uses for that guy then i got a leatherman here and this is a, a real deal leatherman but as long as you have a quality one it doesn't obviously have to be leatherman some people love the gerber tools um Want to make, you want to make sure that whatever it is you get and you've tested it. So don't go out and buy like a $5 one and go, oh, it's great, and then find out that, you know, the pliers don't work, the scissors don't work, whatever it is. Make sure that you got your blades nice and sharp, you got your screwdrivers and all kinds of things in here. Um, you'll see one of the themes that runs through my survival bag is kind of a multiplicity of similar items. So multiple lighting options, multiple options when it comes to blades. So I got a blade here. I'll show you another blade that I got. And uh, even as I've been going through my bag, checking it out, I am going to be adding some more um, duplicates just so that I've got some, some extra backup in case something breaks or doesn't work as well as I want it to. So, Leatherman. I think they're pretty much... Oh, no, a couple more things here. we got this, uh, just an inexpensive poncho. This is just a clear one. You can get at Walmart for probably three or four bucks. But good to have. You know, you get in a situation where it's pouring rain, you don't have a raincoat. At least you got something that can, can cover you. And this also serves for a variety of purposes if you, if you had to do a... Um, a still as a, a solar still to get water uh, you could use this as well lots of different uh, multi multiple purposes you can use the poncho for so good to have that as well that's pretty much it here in this pouch I'll show you the two side pouches and then we'll flip to the other side in this side pouch over here I've got this is a, a husky flashlight uh, the uh, you know the husky the brand that um you know people for construction workers use guys who run contracting Cool thing about this is that it's a crank flashlight, so you crank it up for a while and then you can see it'll run. A um, couple different options, you got your basic light and then you've also got these, this flashing thing, this flashing red light on the side, which is cool, you know, if you had, it was a really dark road and you put this on the edge of your car, it might catch some attention. Obviously it's not super big or super bright, but um, one thing I really like about this is that you don't need to worry about batteries for this guy, so another source of lighting for me. And then over on this other side, I've got a SIG water bottle, and uh, I was talking to somebody about this before, and they were saying be careful if you try to boil water in a SIG because uh, it's got a liner inside. I can't confirm or deny that. What I can say is that without even putting this directly in the fire, you can still uh, boil your water to purify it, at least to purify it at one level. And obviously you can carry water in this. There's multiple uses for something like this. So. Um, one of those rarely um, thought about uses sometimes if you're in a survival situation is if you're really cold and you do have hot water, put it in this. You can put this in a sock or even wrap this in some sort of cloth and then holding it against your body will actually help keep you warm. So if you've been camping for a while, you know hot Nalgene's or warm Nalgene's are a good option. You can use this guy too. You just want to be careful because this metal can get very, very hot if you put hot water in it. So. All right, that's the front side of this guy, these two pouches and the two side pockets. So we're going to spin this around and show you what I have on the other side. As you can see, we have a bunch of pockets on this side of the bailout bag, the survival bag. First thing I have here is a SOL, Survive Out There Longer, uh, one to two person um, survival blanket. Now some people like the bivy sacks better than the survival blankets. You'll see I've got a bivy sack as well, but would recommend one of these guys. It does uh, offer you really good option when it comes to staying warm. and. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's not super expensive. I got mine for six bucks and doesn't take a lot of space. So that's to keep that core temperature up. That's pretty much all I have in that pocket. Here we've got some, um, 
sunblock, some sun protection so you don't get burnt. This is important not only in the uh, summer, but also in the winter. You could think, well, it's cold out, so I'm good to go. But you can get yourself good and fried and get some terrible sunburn in the winter. So having some sort of sunscreen or sunblock is important as well. In here, I've got a bandana. And this has multiple uses. Obviously, it's red, so you can you know signal, get somebody's attention. Also good for filtering water, at least to, to some degree. You know, you don't want to just use this. There's multiple le levels of filtering. And the other thing that's cool is you can see this has some writing on it. It talks about different types of sicknesses that often happen in the outdoors and what to um, what to do after them. So uh, for this one example, acute mountain sickness, some possible symptoms, and then some possible treatments. That's obviously a more extreme example, but it gives you a rundown of what to do in, you know, somebody who has heat exposure or, um, you know, frostbite, things like that. So good option uh, to keep with you. That's that. And here, got two things. I'll show you the knife in a second. But we've got some paracord. And one of the key things about paracord is that you have this. Um, you got those individual strands in there. So if you had to take them apart to do some sort of sewing or whatever it might be, you can use that. So make sure you get some good quality paracord. And I recommend, you know, 50 feet at least, 100 feet is probably better. So that and then I've got this Gerber fixed blade and you can see um, pretty much brand new I try not to use it for anything except uh, keeping keeping it in this bag rubberized handle and then you can also see full tang meaning that the uh, metal runs all the way through the bottom of the blade so very solid very secure and you can use this guy for uh, you know a variety of different things obviously in a survival situation full tang uh, is the best option really for a survival situation so we got that guy in there that's empty and then down in here pretty much use this whole pocket just for this one guy it's a big roll of duct tape and you can see let me get it there that's the Spanish duct tape D-U-C-T so uh, if you go to a place like Walmart you can find this stuff in various colors and it says D-U-C-K duct tape real duct tape is what you use on ducts like if you're doing some sort of repair you know using doing any kind of duct work so this is what you want this stuff is high quality uh, it'll stick well that other stuff I've used before and I just I'm not impressed with it so that's why I always spend a little bit more and get something good um, this guy still you can see it's still wrapped in the plastic I'm doing that just to keep any moisture away from it but highly recommend this obviously you know I've heard it said that if it's if duct tape can't fix it then it's not really broken so great option there Over here, I've got uh, two things. One is a thermometer, so you can tell what the temperature is, and then also a SOL um, whistle. And this is great for getting somebody's attention if you gotta, you know, you're in a situation where someone's going by and you gotta get their attention to signal them to stop. There you go. There's a good option there. So, all right. So we've done both sides and the two sides of the uh, bag. Now we'll take a look inside, and that'll pretty much wrap it up. All right, inside, first thing, just another bandana. This is also really good to, you know, wear as like a, uh, a do-rag on your head, keep that sweat out of your eyes. I also found that, you know, when I'm dealing with bugs, I'll put one of these on my head and then get some of the local um, plant life, you know, that's got any kind of scent and kind of rub it on my head and it seems to keep the bugs away. So I use that. Um, it's definitely a kind of a strange technique, but it has worked for me. So uh, another... As you can see, multiple bandanas, multiple forms of light, whatever it might be. First aid kit, you can see this is from, let me get the uh, camera so you can see it properly. Um, where is it here? Adventure Medical Kits. They make pretty good basic first aid kits. Uh, I also have in my car a Black Hawk kit that I've built myself. It's a Black Hawk medical bag that rolls out. And uh, I've built that one myself, but this is, you know, good to have, again, multiple options for you. So first aid kit. One recommendation I'll make is that uh, with a first aid kit and also with some other op some other tools in here, you want to make sure you know how to use it. Just don't think, oh, I got a first aid kit, now I'm a doctor. Not the case. You got to know what you're doing with the actual item. So, first aid kit there. This is the uh, SOL Emergency Bivy, and I mentioned I have one of the uh, the blankets as well. So you can see this thing is super compact. Basically, fits you know in my hand. It's like a, it's a little bit bigger than a baseball maybe, but now something to stay extra warm doesn't take up much space got a um, I think this is proper not that it, it makes a huge difference but proper multicam boonie cap this will help keep more heat in or uh, keep the sun off you so you can avoid getting sunburn things like that down in here 
Got some mechanics gloves, and these will these will give you a little bit of warmth when it comes to cooler weather. Certainly, it's not like a you know a fleece lined or a wool glove, but this will work well. Um, also, to protect your hands if you have to uh, clam you know be climbing over something, this is good to uh, to be using to protect your hands as well. Got some food. I actually, um, as I just mentioned, I recommend you making sure you know what you're doing with the gear that you have. So I actually had two of these and I made one of them to try it just to see how it worked. So I was familiar with it, but uh, I'll have to refill that, put another one in here. But this is some mac and cheese. I do have a fire starter in here. I do have an option for boiling water if I can get a water source. And uh, so between that and this, boil it, fill it up, and this has got 420 calories. So now I got some energy in me and um, when you get done with this, don't just throw out the package or just leave it in the woods. You could actually use it for various things as well. So keep that in mind. Down here, this is a uh, EMS, like a kind of like a, a lightweight or a midweight um, long sleeve shirt, and it's got a zip up front and a pretty high collar, so a little extra weight. As I was mentioning before, I can remember one time I was waiting for somebody and uh, it was pretty chilly and whatever I was waiting. So this was good to have just sitting there in my car as a backup. A couple other things, got another poncho, this one's bright orange, you can actually use this as a um, por portion of a shelter because it's square shape when you lay it flat. Um, this guy's getting a little bit old, it's starting to fray, so I got to make sure that it's still in good enough condition to actually use if I needed it, but bright orange keeps the water off, obviously very helpful if it's raining. Um, these are Euro socks, these are like a, a lightweight hiker, love this brand of sock, you'll see a review um, coming up soon. Strange maybe to review socks, but um, man, if you get a good pair, you just rant and rave about them because they're so comfortable. Nothing like, you know, your feet are cold, wet, all day you've been uh, moving around or active or sweating. Nice, nice to be able to change it to a nice dry pair of socks in the evening. So, extra pair of socks. North Face hat. Um, you can see here it's got a fleece liner inside, so that's actually really nice. Highly recommend that you invest the money in a good hat. Don't just go out and buy a $2 hat um, at some place. Worthwhile to spend, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 bucks to get a hat that's going to really keep you warm. I like this guy a lot. So keep this in my bailout bag. Survival bag, I should say. Tom Brown's Field Guide to Wilderness Survival. This is actually the book that got me into Wilderness Survival. So I basically started studying it when I was uh, in high school and just got into the woods, learned, 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 studied, 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 and then uh, you know got connected to other people who were interested in this. Again, I want to emphasize, you can't just grab this book, run into the woods, and go, now I can survive. you got to actually work on these skills. You're not going to just be able to do a bull drill fire perfectly the first time. Um, you're not going to be able to build your debris hut, your debris shelter, perfectly the first time. So take some time and actually study this book if you're going to use these, uh, use the skills that are in here. So that's another resource. Got a couple more things in here. This is a um, just a little stuff sack, and in this stuff sack I put just a lot of small items because I don't want things bouncing around all over the place. So in here I've got some dryer lint, and that's to help start a fire. I want to note also that Dryer lint starts very easily, or sparks really easily, when it comes right off the uh, lint catch. But when you compress it like this, you really got to kind of fluff it up and spread it out for it to catch uh, catch fire. You've also got the bag that it's in, and also some rubber bands here, so multiple uses there. Tiny bit of bungee. Uh, you can use this to repair, you know, something a, t a tent, for example, but also for other options. Nice to have multiple cordages, and that's uh, that's there. Got a compass here and uh, just the uh, rubber band on it to keep the um, string wrapped and out of the way. So we got that. It is adjustable. It does not have a mirror, but I do want to get one that has a mirror. And because I don't have a mirror on this, I do have an extra mirror in this bag. So I do have a fire starter here. Basically, it's this is um, from Coughlin's, just a very basic uh, outdoor brand. You got your magnesium and then your ferro rod. I've worked this one of these guys for quite a bit to make sure I'm very comfortable with it. So again, it's not something that just comes naturally. You got to really know how to work it. And uh, some of them come with kind of a small saw-like metal object, so you can strike and also scrape the magnesium off. And I would just use my knife for that. So fire starter there as well. And even as I've been going through this, reviewing it, you know, I've been thinking of other things I want to add. For example, even just some waterproof matches or some other fire starting options. So here we've got some more rubber bands, some. Uh, dental floss and then on the back you can see I've got um, a couple needles and there's tape covering them to keep them safe so I don't stab myself or somebody else but dental floss this is about 50 yards um, 
great to have this. You can use it for fishing, use it for sewing something up. Always good to have dental floss, and it's actually very, very strong. So, good option there. Got uh, some wire here. Uh, this is, you know, again, general use. I can't tell you all the specific things you would use it for, but uh, securing, repairing, fixing, definitely good to have this guy in there. Got a slightly heavier gauge of wire. This is the type that you would use to hang like a, you know, a heavier picture. This is, I got to double check, but it's between 40 and 70 pounds it can take. So strong wire. Uh, if you were out in the woods for quite a while, you could use this for making a snare or some sort of trap. And then uh, obviously for other options as well. A couple more things in here. Don't forget, you can obviously use the bag for a variety of things, collecting items. Um, it's not going to really store water that well, but that's another option. Got my water purification tablets. I've got one that actually purifies the water and one that takes the nasty taste away. Uh, remember, just because you have taken, say, Giardia and other nasties like that out of the water doesn't mean it's totally clean or clear to drink, so make sure you're careful with that. Got some um, lip balm, uh, you know, chapstick basically. By, made by Banana Boat. It's got FPS. Uh, um, wait, what's the word I'm looking for? SPF. There it is. SPF. And that um, actually, you know, protects against chaps getting chap lip and also sunburn on your lips. Terrible, terrible thing to have sunburn on your lips. So just make sure you got something. If you're not putting this on, put some sort of sunscreen on your lips. Something so you don't get sunburn. If you're out there exposed for a while. And then I got these two uh, or three maybe huge rubber bands. These came on a set of uh, MSR snowshoes and I got a rubber band keeping them together again just general use very lightweight don't take up a lot of space and uh, so I have this guy available a um, couple other things I want to mention right now I've got I think there's two here uh, black garbage bags I actually went today to Home Depot to buy some 55 gallon drum liners and they didn't have them there you can only get them online from Home Depot at least the store I was at so I'm gonna get those you can use them for shelter you know, if you got to sit on the ground, it's nice to not be sitting on the ground directly and getting soaking wet. So here's a good option for you. And then if you have a, uh, you know, a bigger one, you can obviously use it for a larger shelter. So that and zip ties. I'm going to put a couple more in here because I've used some of them. But repairing things, um, you know, just general, again, use for zip ties. I've I, The reason that I've only got a couple left is because I've used them for a bunch of different situations that have popped up. So good to have this. Last couple items here in the bag. Um, if you guys have watched my other videos, you'll know that I'm a uh, I'm a pastor full time. So I got a Bible with me. This is for spiritual encouragement and for psychological encouragement. So spiritually, you know, obviously this keeps me keeps me focused in say a survival or a tough situation, and also just having something to read or study or focus on as opposed to oh my goodness, I'm in a crisis situation. So psychologically, that's a huge deal. So you'll hear, hear different people talk about the importance of fire or shelter when you're in a survival situation. Well, a lot of that has to do with what's your mindset. If you got a home base, I've got fire, I'm warmth, I've got light, I've got a home base because I have shelter, that can really change your survivability rate. And same thing with having something to focus on. So for me, this is a kind of a double-edged sword in that it's spiritually encouraging and also psychologically can help me in a survival situation. So... There's that guy. And then the last item, which is quite large and it's pretty heavy, but I really like it. And I've used it actually quite a few times. Let me get this guy centered there. This is the um, Stanley Fat Max Fubar. And this is kind of a, uh, it's a wrecking tool. It's a demolition tool, but it's got multiple uses. So, you know, you wanna, you got a pry option here. You got a nail remover. You can see that you can actually use this as a hammer. Just tons of different options. Even just if you got to, you know, destroy something. Say you found a log that you had to break or get into. Um, here's here's a good option for you. I just just give you a simple example. I was out actually um, for work putting up some signs, and I had to put up a um, some put some wood stakes in the ground. So I went out and did that, and I came back maybe the next day, and they had fallen over. And I didn't have the same hammer with me, but I had this guy. So got this guy out, put those signs back in. Again, that's not a survival situation, but the fact that it was in my car and readily accessible made it uh, made it nice for me to be able to use that. All right, guys, two final thoughts real quick. First is when it comes to a bailout bag, bug out bag, survival bag, whatever you're calling it, first thing you want to do is be thinking about what's your philosophy when it comes to actually why you have the bag. So is it I'm going to grab this bag, grab my, grab my family, and run to the woods because of a crisis situation? Or is it maybe more like my bag, at least this one that I have in my car, is everyday use, um, survival situation if I'm out in the woods, but also just helping people out or helping myself out, having items that are useful overall. So think about your, what's, what's the um, 
the mindset you have when you're building this bag and what its overall what's its overall use. Second thing is just want to emphasize just because you spend lots of money on fancy items doesn't make you a survivalist. You got to know how to use those tools. I was out the other day um, working the ferro rod and actually trying different things like um, different types of tinder, cedar bark. I had heard cedar was good before, uh, good in the past. I'd actually used um, cedar, but it was cedar that I bought at like a you know a, a Home Depot or a Lowe's or something like that. So I went out, found a cedar tree, tried the bark, started up beautifully for a fire, and I thought, okay, now I have a little experience with it. So it's not just a theory. I've actually applied these skills and said that, yes, I can do it. So make sure it's not just I have the cool stuff, now I'm a survivalist, but really get out, get comfortable using it, and then you actually bring that skill set to the table if something actually goes down. So appreciate you guys, as always, checking out the video. Keep checking back uh, regularly, and uh, we'll have more vids for you. Um, subscribe, like this video, and check us out on Facebook. All right, guys, Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids. We'll see you soon.